How, what do you mean by, by King C4? Oh, not here. Okay, okay. All, all right. We will look. We will come to that. Yeah, yeah. No problem, tactical magician. We'll come to that. So, sorry, HDI chess. I interrupted you. You were saying bishop e6. So here I must definitely move my knight, right? I cannot go to c8 probably because that pawn ending should be winning for white. So I'll play here knight e8 instead. So what was your idea, H exactly? So d6, this is the key move. Only this way we're able to open up a new front. Our idea is to bring over the king to attack that pawn. So you can see here we speak about two weaknesses and so on. You could say it's a weakness already, but we're not creating any weakness. We're just making it so, making sure that we can approach it somehow, we can exploit it. So that's what we're talking about here. We're sacking the pawn so that the king can make use of those light squads. All right, I'll take. Please continue, HDHS, king d5, of course. I'll move my knight somewhere. I know that the HDHS will move their king this way, so I must try to create some kind of barrier. So knight d8 was played in the game, and here you just retreated the bishop. Exactly. So uh, we will continue looking at this uh, at this game. It's still very interesting. We will continue to look at this game, but I just wanted to stop here so that everybody understands what we're doing. We, we have already some kind of front on this side. We can attack those pawns at some point, maybe with the bishop. We have another front here, you could say, fast pawn coming up. But here it's important to understand that our king will attack that pawn. So a lot of things that black will have to cope with at the same time. Uh, in the game, they played here knight g7. Now, should I go back? Should we continue to talk about the other options? So, bishop d6, I was saying that I'll probably play king d7. Wait for you. If king b6, king c8, I'm not convinced that this makes so much sense for, for white. All right? Uh, what else did you say here? Uh, king d4, some people were saying. You wanted to play bishop g6, bishop d6, and then you wanted to play king d4. Yeah, I didn't really understand this. I mean, I can just go back with the knight, right? So I keep my barrier intact, no? And now I cannot. I can just move my king, I guess. You are not able to, to enter, so... I think it's actually the only way to progress here, is the way that um, HDI chess is, is explaining. You have to give up that pawn. So if, if you're not uh, agreeing with me, please, please let me know. King e3 says Mega Charles Rex. All right, I'll just wait for you then. What's your plan here? I don't follow. You cannot enter on this side of the board, can you? Yeah, let's let's continue instead. All right, let's continue. I have more examples, so we should uh, be practical here and let's focus on the most important stuff. So um, I'll quiz you again on on the four first moves, right? I'll quiz you again so that everybody can uh, exploit this, uh, can put into practice this idea. All right, I'll quiz everybody again, but this time I'll only give you thirty seconds. All right, let's see if you remember what we just looked at. Aha, L008, you got it. HTHS, Medina Tiger, Hong Pao, Mega Charles, Rex, Troy Boy, Pikachu, Kwaki, Eric, Aditea. All right, nice. A lot of people uh, got this. Yeah, it's we're doing chessable training here, learning by repeating. Please remember, this is chessable classroom, fantastic tool for online chess learning. Santos, you got it as well. Very nice. So let's uh, let's move on. Let's move on here. Bishop p6, knight d8. We sack the pawn so that we can use these light squares with our king. King d5, knight d8, bishop f5, and black played here, knight g7. So the next step in our plan is to combine these different fronts somehow. Uh, yeah, we should not let them take on f5, of course. Then they would emerge with a with a protected passed pawn. So how to progress? From this point in the game, they play here first bishop g6, and after king d7, uh, it makes sense to to work on. We were speaking about th three fronts, right? We have something going on here. At some point, we would like to go over with the king. We have something going on there, and our third front is is the passed pawn, so to speak. So here, Sargassian played d4, and after king c7, um, how do you think white should proceed in order to to win this game? Um, I cannot really quiz this because there are so many different uh, solutions, but they're all connected to the same idea. So maybe if you like, instead of quizzing you, you could just write in the chat um, what would be the plan here. Pikachu says Bishop F7. However, this is a dangerous move because you let me swap pawns. I mean, you will never lose, but um, I think things will get more complex if you let me 
uh, swap these pawns and uh, I'm creating a passed pawn which will distract you a little. So I wouldn't put the bishop there, Pikachu. All right, anyone else? The first move you should look at, of course, is King c5. But yeah, like everybody has noticed, then Black will give check. So we should try to see that the, the tempi, you know, to get the tempi right. So remember, when you have such a favorable position like this one, you should always make yourself the question: uh, What would my opponent play if if the, if it was them to move? So if you ask yourself that question, you will see that they cannot move the knight, they cannot move the pawn, they must move the king. They would have to play king d7, and in that case. You could go king c5. Now it's different because once they play knight e6, as you can see, the king is no longer on c7 in this variation, and now you will play king b6, right? So we're working on the other front. All right, I hope everybody understood what I'm saying. Else we will look at the king e4 says, uh, king c4 says Medina Tiger, but what if I play king d6 then? Is, what's your point here? d5, king c5, d6, then some. Oh, you're, you're explaining the plan here. Oh, I see what you mean. So you'll play d5. Yeah, interesting. Actually, my knight is... Uh, it cannot move, right? Maybe I'm in trouble here then. Yeah, right. Interesting plan. I mean, you only have to check if there's some f... Yeah, waste the move. You got it, RZ 2018. I'm just trying to understand if, if this also works. Does it work? Anybody with a sharp tactical eye? Do I have some f5 move here, maybe? Yeah, maybe you're right, uh, Medina Tiger. Maybe you can play like that also. Uh, maybe I could also wait like this, though. What does that mean? King d7. But, okay, you would still play d5, right? Good point. Good point. I guess I would play knight e6 then. Yeah, since your king moved away, I would rather you use the knight. Yeah, exactly. And now, I mean, my knight is free. It has freedom now, so I can play something like knight... Well, where would I put my knight? On f4? And then I put my king on d6? I don't think this can be so bad for... For, for black, can it? Well, I'm, the, the bishop looks very strong still. I mean, um, I have some issues. Did, did I misplace my knight? Maybe I misplaced the knight. Maybe the bishop is now dominating the knight. Funny. I played it in a... I put it in a bad place. So where should I put the knight then? Uh, or, or, or was it correct? I don't know, actually. This is a little confusing. Let's, let's play it again. All right, like this, maybe. So what's going on here? F8 looks better, says Troy Boy. Okay. But then they will play bishop F5. This is... What I call the magic distance. Now you're dominating this knight completely. Or that doesn't matter, Troy Boy. I can play knight e7 here. I don't know. I, I mean, I don't have the answer. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this uh, just like you guys. Uh, but it looks uh, uh, uncomfortable for black. So, yeah. What about this knight? Where to put it? Or should we have tried some b6 move at some point? Knight f4, bishop f5, and b6. Could I play like that? Or? I mean, swapping pawns makes sense for white, for black, doesn't it? Because we're the defender. Mega charge Rex says king d6. But king d6, they'll play bishop c8. You're going to take this pawn, but I'll take here. This is a kind of situation that the bishop loves with uh, mutual passed pawns. Oh, knight c7, you mean. Aha, you're right. Good point. Yeah, I think actually black is close to drawing this game, right? Yeah, I think so. It looks promising. I mean, promising for a draw. Because if it was black to move again, they would have some issues, but it's white to play. So if bishop here, I could go king c6, I guess. Oh, but you have bishop takes. Is this crazy or could I play something like, th like this? Wow, this got very confusing. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Th this got very confusing. Um, I think I like my, my way better here. I like b6 better. Uh -huh. I think I, pr I would prefer to play like this, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, King, King d6 says Mega Charles Rex. When? What if d6 here? Yeah, I'll take it. And if you take, I'll. I mean, I'm very happy to swap pawns. If black can get away. Yeah, yeah, Troy, you're right. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Troy has an idea here. Uh, Troy is saying that we could put the knight on. Um, was it like this? To put it, the knight on f8 and then knight d7. But do, do you really think you can get away with this? Take, take. King d4. This looks very nasty, doesn't it? And I'll just move over here. Yeah, this should be winning. Santos is saying something else. Okay. Then white is pretty easily winning. Yeah, I think so. Uh, isn't this perpetual? Okay, I think we should go back to the variation, the knight. So you're saying knight f4. We're saying bishop f5. No, no. Was it like this? Yeah. b6, d6. How was the variation? 
I'm uh, looking at this variation. No, it was not like this. Was it like this? No, uh, Santos is saying that why should take on b6 and play d6 instead? And then play d7. I see what you mean. Uh -huh. But do you win this, uh, Santos? It doesn't look that trivial to me. Instead of b6, king d6 for black, says Subham. Yeah, we talked about that, uh, Subham, but we were saying that bishop c8 was annoying. Oh, I see, and you just go back. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. So this seems to be some kind of fortress, right? All right, good good point, Hong Pao, king c7. Exactly, so we don't uh, get afraid of, of bishop c8. All right, yeah, maybe a little... Uh, Confusing analysis, but okay, we, we, we understood this. So probably we should not let the knight get out. So that's why we should not play king c4 here. So we had some people saying that we should simply lose a temple, right? Uh, somebody, how would you lose a temple? Yeah, you know, the bishop is very good at this task. So any uh, volunteer? Yeah, L008 says bishop h7. Exactly, we stay on this diagonal so that they don't uh, manage to play f5. I play some random move here, like uh, knight. No, I cannot play knight e8. Then, then the king enters, right? Yeah, so I have to play king d7. Bishop c2 says, add chess. Okay, good teamwork. I'll go back. And now, finally, we go back to g6. So this is what I was speaking about. Here, we have simply lost the tempo, so that it's black to play. And you can see for yourself, uh, black doesn't have any good move here. b6 is not a good idea, I guess, because we couldn't take and we can enter with our king. Please notice how this bishop is dominating the knight completely. And if we play then king g7, uh, how is the winning uh, procedure here, anyone? Why to play in win? Yeah, you're right, l008. King c5. Now the tempi are right, because if knight e6, we just play king v6 and we pick up the pawn. Right. So if king c7, you can see for yourself, we're just in time to play d5 and yeah black black is completely lost here they have no good move you can win in different ways i don't know which is the most pleasant way i think i would consider just to play king b6 myself here and uh, yeah i guess that's the end of it you can use this pawn to deflect the black king if, if necessary so right summing up what we have seen here white was a pawn up but it was not so easy for them to progress they somehow needed to create something new in the position, open up a new front. How did they manage that? Well, they first uh, lost the tempo with the bishop, forcing the knight to move. They stay on this diagonal so that the king cannot uh, move. And then they sack a pawn here to bring in the king. And finally, in this position, we reach some kind of tsukswang later on. We push the pawn and, and so on. All right. Nice. Let's uh, move on. Let's see a typical kind of endgame for this situation with two weaknesses or opening up a new front. Let's see a uh, bishop's endgame. I mean, with bishops of the same color. There, this uh, idea is very, very frequent. So let's have a look here at the game played in the Spanish Championship a few years ago. We have this very interesting endgame between with the white pieces, uh, Pepe Cuenca and playing black is Perez Candelario. So if we try to understand this position, let's look at it from black's angle. We can see that black is very happy, of course, that black's pawns, I mean, white's pawns are on dark squares, the same color as the bishop. Yeah, this is endgame basics, of course. Uh, and we're very happy to have our pawns on light squares instead. So yeah, it's clear that black has many things uh, to their favor here, you can also see that the king is better placed than white's king. We have some kind of opposition situation here. If the king moves, the black king will enter and so on. And you can even trace some kind of situation where one pawn uh, stops uh, two pawns, right? In the, if you just look at the center. But okay, please remember that if the king moves far away, maybe there might be some chance with d5. Don't underestimate white. However, I would like to see how you can exploit these advantages and uh, win the game with the black pieces because actually black is winning here but you have to play in a, in a smart way you have to look at the whole board and try to open up not only one but actually two more fronts here right? i mean you could say that this is one front right in the center so we're tying up the black white king to the defense of sorry of this of these squares and pawns uh, but we have to do something on the flanks also right yeah i'll issue the quiz now let's see 
if I can make this work. Let's see here. I'll do the long variation from the game. Yeah, by the way, in the previous example, it ended like that, more or less what, what you saw. The game, Sargsian Horm, that's what happened in the game, what, what you saw, if you were curious about uh, the course of the game. All right, I'll bring up the whole solution here. Yeah, up to this point. I, I'll give you two minutes. I think you have to give me like five moves. Uh, good luck, everyone. Don't forget to play on both flanks, okay? And take your time, please. Take your time. This is not trivial. It's not basic. It's very sophisticated, the way in which you will win the game here. So take your time, please. I get the point, uh, Medina Tiger, but I guess I'll just defend that pawn then, okay? Uh, HDI chess. I'll defend that pawn. You, you don't lose anything by playing it, of course. You can always play around the bishop, but uh, it's not the most powerful solution. Uh, I'm think, I think you're risking too much, uh, L008, Kwoki, Awesome, Owen, and Santos. I think that's too flashy. Your, your continuation is too flashy. You might even end up losing the game if you play like that. I told you, white has a pawn majority in the center. So if your king moves away from the center, I might be able to create a pawn. Okay, Aditya, we have a winner here. Aditya has already found uh, the winning continuation used by Perez Candelario in the game. A lot of people are creating some kind of um, kamikaze uh, continuation here. Yeah, don't do that. I don't know why Why are you so attracted by that continuation. Yeah. All right. Uh, Eric F., you got it as well. Very nice. But Pikachu, Hong Pao also. You see, some people here are taking their time. They're looking into the details and they end up finding the right solution. That's how you should work, of course. Don't send me that quickly. The answers, we will look at this kamikaze movement. We'll see if you can draw the game or, or if white is winning after your move. All right. Uh, Mega Charles Rex, uh, I don't see a reason to retreat the king, actually. Unless you're like triangulating, but uh, I think I can triangulate just like you can. Aha, I think I found it now. Okay, Adi Chess, uh, that's the important thing. Um, but you don't lose anything by your, your continuation. All right, so let's see if we can understand this uh, clearly. Again, we have a very nice situation in the center. We're tying up White's king completely. Their king cannot move. They can only move the bishop. We would love to play g5, of course, but White's bishop is posted on this diagonal. It will not move away from that diagonal, so they won't let us play g5 for now. Yeah, we would like to go a5, and some people are playing a5, which I would say is the kamikaze move, because I'll take that pawn. If you take my pawn, I'll run with my pawn. And this is what I was saying from the very beginning. We have two pawns versus one uh, in the center. So if your king moves away, I will look for some tactics here. I can see a nice tactic here. Anyone else? Aha, L008, you got it. That's the one that I'm looking at also. d5, you take, and now I have a fast pawn. Two passed pawns, that's a lot for the black king and bishop, so we can play e6, and after they go for this pawn, I guess we can just, I mean, unless there is something even better, we will just play bishop g5, right? And white will win the game. So that's why I'm saying, don't be too clever in these endgames. Be careful. Just because they have this backward pawn, it doesn't mean that it will stay there forever. So a5, the idea is good, of course, but the execution is not uh, working at all. All right. What else did you say here? Yeah, uh, some people were saying the move uh, bishop d8. Yeah, that's the, what they played in the game. And I played bishop c1, and you were saying bishop b6. Okay, you can play like this, of course. It doesn't uh, uh, ruin anything, no? But okay, I can put my bishop on... Well, would I put my bishop on e3? Yeah, probably on e3. And it will be more or less like, like the game. Or should I put my bishop on b2? Maybe I should put it on b2 then. Yeah, I can put my bishop on b2. So you would still have to come up with a solution then. Uh, Aditya says a5. Yeah, and then you can play a5. Exactly. So, I mean, you're not losing anything. You're just slowing down the winning process by one move, which is, of course, not bad at all. Take your time. It's, it's fine. So a5, and uh, I would not take that pawn. Remember, I mean, notice that if, if I play like this, you will have a new angle for for your bishop, so this is not uh, advisable for me. So I would just play here <clears throat> bishop c3, but um, 
Let's have a look at this. Our F4 attempts worth five for white. Yeah, maybe you're right, the Troy boy. Good point. You could perhaps play like this also. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So maybe in the end, I shouldn't put my uh, my bishop there. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Troy boy. I should keep my bishop on this diagonal instead. Yeah, it's, it's very good that you pointed out this. Aha. And then black will have to play a5, and we will end up in the game uh, later. So let's... Uh, Let's listen to somebody who got it right. Aditya, okay, Aditya, uh, you can take it from here. Aditya with the black pieces. Yeah, please go ahead. How do you continue? So bishop d8, I'll lose my tempo with bishop c1. I must keep the bishop on this diagonal because if I move it uh, elsewhere, uh, Aditya, what would happen? Yeah, you can play f4. Sorry, let me play in this way then. Okay. So that it's more clear cut. Yeah, now you don't play a four anymore, but you would use the other pawn push, right? I just want everybody to notice here the. All right, you want to play like that? Fine, but I mean this must be more natural, don't you think? So that if they take, we take back, and now we also have this one plan here, and we have another plan there to, to create a pass pawn on the h file. So uh, g five will be a winning move if uh, White allows it. So in the game, they played bishop c1. All right, uh, Aditya, please uh, continue. <clears throat> Aha. So here, what White noticed was that if they play bishop d2, they will end up in Zugzwang very soon. Um, do you see the Zugzwang here, Aditya, coming up? Anyone? There is going to be a Zugzwang here. Please remember, we're speaking about different uh, weaknesses, about weak different fronts. Zugzwang is very important. We saw Sargsyan using this idea very recently. Here is the Zugzwang situation. Exactly, Mega Charles Rex. Aha. Yeah, you're right, Samham. Exactly. Here we have the Zugzwang. So we play bishop e7, and white uh, doesn't have a good move because the king cannot move as always. The black king would then enter if the bishop must keep track of this one, but it must also keep track of the g5 uh, square. So, yeah, white is lost here. We already saw the idea. So for that reason, in the game, Pepe Cuenca instead plays here bishop e3. But it doesn't change really the, the verdict of this endgame. It's just more pretty now. So let's uh, make another quiz here. All right. Let's bring up the quiz moves. It's just a little more pretty this time. All right. Here we go. I give you 1 minute 30. This is not difficult. So now we're speaking black to playing win. All right, Pikachu, good work. You got it. Eric, Jelly Bean. Of course, you can play that uh, HDI and Santos. It's not ruining anything. Um, but okay, the other way is more clear cut. Aditya, Sabham, Hong Pao, you got it. That's completely right. Little Grandmaster, excellent work. L008, Mega Charles Rex. Yeah, this was a piece of cake for you. Very easy. Uh -huh. Just combining the different uh, uh, fronts, so to speak, and uh, exhaust the white defenses. Excellent. All right. Uh, should we stop there or should I wait? Somebody still left. Tactical Magician, you got it. Great work. Mega Charles Rex also. Aha. Uh -huh. Right, I think we can probably, we can stop there. So, uh, Pikachu, uh, what do you say? How do you continue with black here? So we first take. And here white got into the same situation, but it's black to play. It looks like it's a mutual Zugzwang, but it's not because we have f4. So we're overloading white's defenses here. Bishop takes f4, uh, would not be a good idea. You would then take, and actually you can hit this weakness also if you like. Uh, I don't have any productive way of playing here. Let me try something just for the sake of clarity. Let's say I play something like, uh, yeah, what terrible to be in this situation. I, I cannot come up with a proper move. Okay, I'll play bishop d5. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, uh, who's playing? Yeah, exactly. So just for the record, no, you don't even have to run with this pawn. You can do that, of course, but you could even play if you like. If you like the whole situation with weaknesses and all this stuff, exactly. So now you're targeting 
uh, two weaknesses at the same time. Yeah, I, I have no way of, of coping with this. Too many uh, bad things happening to White at the same time. So in the game, they took like this instead. And uh, yeah, the rest is simple. Aha, we get the other pawn now. Please go ahead, uh, Pikachu. Please go ahead. Okay, so we take the pawn and yeah. Um, do I have the record here? Uh, the game record? Let's see. Yeah, they played king e3. Okay, but there are many ways to, to, to progress here. Um, but I like the way in which uh, Perez Candelario played in the game. I mean, you could consider a move like king c4, but uh, yeah, I mean, maybe at some point uh, you will still look into some... If the king takes this pawn at some point, maybe there is something. So he just played g5 in the game. Yeah, this is nicer. So here we can see simply that uh, black is... It's winning no matter what happens. If they take, we'll take and we'll swap and yeah, we'll win the game. In the game, they played f5 and black just took on f5 and they went on to win. All right, we had a question here. What if you go bishop f8 and bishop h6? All right. What if you go bishop f8 and then bishop h6, says Medina Tiger? You mean right now? Aha, I understand to bring over the bishop. Um, yeah, makes sense. Uh, I like it. I like your idea. Uh, you bring over the bishop and now you're threatening to go f4, right? Uh, although I, although there, are, there is some pin also. I don't, did you check this pin, uh, Medina Tiger? Is no issues here for black? Uh, or or you, you had some trick perhaps coming up here? What if instead of f4 you go bishop f8, bishop h6? That's what we're looking at, right, uh, Medina Tiger? Yeah, so you can also go g5, but then again, I might go bishop d2. I wouldn't be surprised if this wins somehow. Maybe you can play some fancy move like Pontex, right? I cannot take because then you have h3 from it. Yeah, Troy Boy also noticed. Exactly. So maybe this also works. But okay, is this really the, is this the pawn that you wanted to trade, really? If I take... Yeah, I guess this also works. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so you can say Black's position is so superior from the very beginning that most things... Uh, work here, right? Uh, but still, I, li I like the way in which he proceeded in the game. So, um, yeah, we I think we understood this endgame, right? Everybody understood it. Uh, do we have to, to quiz it again, again, or should I just move on to the next example? Um, move on, yeah. So everybody, yeah, your choice. No, I mean, your, your choice, not my choice. Next one, exactly. So everybody understood to win this endgame, we have to work on several fronts. I, I forgot to say one thing here. If you play, uh, let's see here, what, what did we do in the game? I mean, you could also consider a move like a4. I mean, theoretically speaking, it would be smart to fix a weakness here. But somehow it doesn't work that that well uh, because simply the bishop can just stay on this diagonal now. So it's it's actually important to take here, uh, just for the record. No? In some other end game, probably a4 could be a killing move, but not here. Here it's better to to take, to fix the weakness straight away and and uh, else I guess you cannot uh, you cannot ex uh, achieve this kind of breakthrough. Nice, we'll move on to the next example. So if you don't mind, we could have a look at, let's see here, I have two different uh, endgames. Would you like another bishop's endgame or would you prefer an endgame uh, with the uh, exchange up, uh, rook versus bishop? What What would you prefer? Bishop endgame. All right. Oh, endgame with exchange. Exchange <laughs> up. Okay. I don't know. We'll take next time. We'll look at the other uh, bishop endgame, right? Let's have some variation today. Let me show you something from the Swedish Championship, right? Let's see a very interesting endgame which was played this year in the Championship of my country, of Sweden. So here we have, um, let's see here. We have with the white pieces Storm and playing black. Uh, famous Swedish Grandmaster Tigger Hilla Person. So let's see if we can understand this endgame properly. We have a material balance, I would say. Uh, as you can see here, we have the exchange up for white, but black has two pawns for the exchange. However, the pawn structure is not exactly in black's favor, no, because they're sitting with the light squared bishop. So it's safe to say that white is playing for a win here. But actually, black won the game in the end. So you're playing with the white pieces and it's not so easy to progress here, believe me. It's not a simple task. So I would like to give this challenge to, to you. You're playing with the white pieces. Try to find the smartest way to, to proceed here. All right?
Um, please notice that I'm about maybe to play something like bishop c6 and b5 and a5. I would really like to uh, advance those pawns. So if you use some little restriction also in your play, that would be great. The first move, it's not that easy, I would say, but uh, I'm pretty sure you can find it. So let's have a look here. Uh, let's issue the quiz. Let's see if you can get this right. Um, I think I'll just ask you for the first four moves in my variation. All right, two minutes. Let's see. Why to play and get a considerable advantage? Why to play and make uh, considerable progress? Aha, uh -huh. so Awesome Owens, Smiling Florence, Subham, you played what they played in the game. Unfortunately, this is not really convincing. Or, okay. So you played in the footsteps of White in this game, but uh, Santos and Little Grandmaster, what you played, that's the game continuation. But it didn't end well. Uh, Kwaki, Alg, Eric, and Adichess, that's the move that I was looking at when, when I saw this game live. But I'll play Bishop C6 against your move. If you play that, I'll play Bishop C6. Uh, HDI Chess, Heavy the Hero, Pikachu, you're on the right track. Yeah, that's what we're going to play later. You understood the connection with today's topic to open up a new front. You're completely right, but I mean, I guess I'll play something like Bishop C6 and I'll play B5 and A5 like I was telling you. So I don't know if you really want me to, to, to do that. Uh, but okay, interesting idea. So RZ 2018 and Royale. What if I reply with the same move? I block the king side. Can you then progress there if I block the king side? Hong Pao, you're on the right track. Uh, we will do that later. Uh, maybe you can do it now. I'm not sure. Maybe. Okay, I'll take it. But you, that's the right spirit, of course, what you're saying. So nobody is saying the, the first move. Oh, so hint. Uh, restriction, restriction. Don't let them play uh, B5. Don't let them play B5. Maybe I should have said that from the very beginning, though. All right. We'll have a look. Oh, almost everybody wants to play like the young Swedish talent uh, Stormer played in the game. Uh, that's, that's what he played in the game. But I'm not sure that's the best way to go. I'm sorry. But uh, that's probably an, an optical illusion. So, right. Did, didn't my move stop B5, kind of, says Adi Chess. Uh, which, which was your move? Let me see very quickly. Adi Chess. Yeah, but there is a prob another problem. Let's let's do this uh, move by move, okay? So a lot of people wanted to play rook takes b6. That's what happened in the game, all right? So this is a good exercise also because it will show you that not always the most tempting move is the right choice. So let's let's have a look here. Let's see. I, I should probably bring up the notation so that I can show you what happened in the game. They took, of course. Why took back? Um, where are we? They played king d7, rook takes, king c6. And this was not trivial, because also black is uh, playing. Uh, they also have a pass pawn, right? This is not convincing. Unless you can convince me, I would say this is not convincing. You can take this pawn if you like. I don't know if I'll take the pawn or I'll play rook a3. This is also an interesting move. Rook a3. I could even play for mate. Maybe at some point we will speak about mate in the endgame. That's another very interesting topic. But I guess you could also take the pawn. And I think it's Black who's playing for a win here. Um, I mean, my rook is, is very well placed. So, unless you can convince me of the opposite, I would say rook takes b6 is a, is a bad choice. And that's how the game went. I think in the game they played something like this. Uh, they went home with a rook. And I think Black, Black played rook a3. And Black went on to win this game. So, yeah. I guess that's not the right way to, to go here. But it's very tempting. I mean, also, please consider that. This bishop is passive, so uh, giving back the change doesn't make that much sense. All right, let's continue. A4, some people were saying, yeah, definitely you stop my plan of b5, but uh, here I would play bishop c6. Like I was saying, when I saw the game, I thought this was the best move, but after bishop c6, I'm not so convinced, um, because it's not so easy for white to, to move anymore. A5, then king c5. Interesting. Uh, what's going on here? If I take the pawn, I'm lost here. If I play like this, you'll, you'll swap rooks, I guess. So I'll take and I play a4. 
what's going on here? Is this completely convincing? You you play rook d8. That would be the most ambitious choice, right? Does this work? This is annoying. Annoying for whom? <laughs> I don't know for whom it's annoying. I can just see that black has a lot of pawns, uh, but maybe it's not enough. If I play something like king, what are we discussing? Uh, we are discussing from this position. We are discussing the move a4, and I'm saying that I'm preparing to go bishop c6 here, and then uh, Adi says says a5. So we were speaking about should black take? Is, is it possible? No, the class topic. Oh, the topic is to open up a new front. So, I mean, speaking about fronts, we have like one front on the queen side. Unfortunately, everything is defended there. So, like some very clever people are saying uh, something will happen here. And that's exactly what will happen later. But first, I think it makes sense to limit black on the queen side. However, I wanted to first look at the move a4 because that's a very uh, natural move. But bishop c6, let's see if we can get this right. No, I think a5 is not good, says Adi Chess. Okay, why is it bad then? Uh, was it this variation or did I miss something here? Rook takes, rook takes. Not, it's not like this. Rook takes a4. Um, please correct me if you if you can see this faster than I can. Uh, I thought of maybe king e7 and I'll put my bishop on b7, maybe? Is white making progress here? It's very, it's very messy, I think, this, this variation with white. Yeah, it's unnecessary to play like this because the king is kind of stuck also. Uh, it must keep track of these pawns. I don't know. I think white is playing with fire here. So why not rook h8 instead of rook d6? Uh, well, I just thought that you didn't want to get distracted, but okay. Uh, fair enough. I can see your idea. Aha. Uh -huh. Maybe you're right. What if I put my pawn on a6 then? I give you this pawn and... Well, yeah, this is complete mayhem now. I just thought I should put this pawn here to, to be able to play bishop e5. What if I put my king on e6? Well, if you can calculate this to the end, uh, Mega Charles Rex, uh, great. Rook c7 says Santos. All right, I'll put my bishop on b5 like I was planning. And what's next? Rook g7, king c5. We're speaking about two different things, no? But if king c5, I'm ready to run with the a pawn. Or what What are we speaking about? I, I don't follow anymore. That's not the idea, right? This looks dangerous for white. Rook c5. Oh, to take the pawn. I see what you mean. But what if I run anyway? What if I run with this pawn? You're queening. I think I'm queening, yeah. Uh, that's close to happening. Why not rook h7, says Mega Charles Rex. This wins for black. Yeah, possibly. So, I mean, please notice, guys, we are moving the pieces. It's a luxury to move the pieces. When they're sitting there at the board, they cannot move around the pieces like this. So, you have to be practical also. So, I, I think we can safely leave this variation and say that it's not trivial to win with white, at least. Um, all right. Now, let's speak about the other moves. H4, some people are saying, to play H5. My question was, if H5... Are you going to play G4, then? Or how are you going to progress on the king side. I cannot see this uh, clearly. So I don't think h4 is a good idea. Some people were saying h3 instead. I think that makes a lot more sense. However, I'm not convinced what happens after. Oh, you meant h3, Troy. Okay, but you were not the only one suggesting h4. So I was thinking of bishop c6, and if you play something like g4, I wanted to play b5. So I cannot see this clearly. If, if you guys can see this clearly, that's great. But um, I mean, I'm going to play a5 and b4 very soon. Wait, so what is the correct move? Yeah, we'll, we'll speak about that. Anyway, I don't say that this is so bad. Maybe you can take, and if I take with the pawn, you'll play rook g1, and uh, you can bring in the rook. Uh, who knows? I mean, I, I can also run with my pawn, and I have my, my past pawns coming up. Uh, I cannot see this that, that clearly, though. So what's the right move? Well, before we start this business on the king side, we should try to limit them on the queen side. Okay? So... Anyone, can you find a way? We can just send me the move to the chat. Can you find a way in which you can kind of freeze their play on the queen side? Can't we quiz again? Yeah, yeah, okay, we'll quiz again. All, all right, all right. Yeah, we'll quiz again. L try to find a way in which you can kind of freeze uh, Black's play on, on the queen side, okay? 
Yeah, okay. So one minute and 30, right? One minute and 30. Let's see if you can get this right. I My gut feeling is that some people will get this right. Or am I saying that because I'm looking at the chat maybe? Who knows? Aha, you can play like that, Medina Tiger, Charles, Hua, but I'll play Bishop E7. And we already saw the the, the exchange uh, sack, right? Well, but okay, it, it's it's fine. It's fine what you're saying. It's not bad, definitely. Uh, it's possible. So HDHS, you you have the solution that I was uh, looking for. Excellent. That's that's great. All right. So only HDI chess got it to the very end. Uh, Royale and Google chess, we looked at that sacrifice. Okay, we have more people finding it. Hong Pao also found it. Mega Charles Rex as well. Heavy the Hero, Quacky, all right, uh, possible. We have a lot of moves coming up here. Uh, Tactical Magician, that's very clever, the move that you're sending. I like it. It's probably working as well. Uh -huh. Jelly Bean gives up the Epon. Well, that's something you should think twice about, right? Because the Epon is, is very important. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's listen to Hong Pao. Okay, Hong Pao, you're on. What would you play here with white? Rook A4. Why on earth do we play Rook A4? Let's have a look. Bishop C6 and Rook A3. So this is a very smart maneuver because if you look carefully, you could see that the white rook on b4 was somehow obstructed by, by the black pawns. But by moving this rook to a3, not only are we uh, controlling the pawn on a7, we are also ready to play in the event of b5, Hong Pao, what would you play here without uh, hesitating? Even second, king c5, entering with a king, and here there is a difference now. When I play king d7, you can put more pressure on on, on white. Oh, e6. Yeah, that's the move that I was looking for, of course. But you're right. Yeah, you can also play e6. Um, but I, I thought you would play it straight away, uh, rook um, a6. But maybe it's the same thing. Anyway, so that's the big difference. No, that's the big difference. That's, that's why we love to have the rook on a3, so that we can meet b5 with rook a6. Also, they can, of course, not play a5, because then they're dropping the rook on the pawn on b6. So black that doesn't uh, have it possibility to, to activate themselves here. They also, they cannot move the rook, of course. It's tied to the pawn. So we're basically tying up three black pieces here. The only piece that they could use is the bishop. But now we can see that since the rook is played on a3, not only is it targeting the a7 pawn, but also it's controlling the third rank. And that will be important when we open up the new front. So please go ahead, the Hong Pao. What will be your next move here? Exactly. We play h3 so that we can go g4. You can see that we didn't sacrifice anything and we didn't let them advance their pawns on the queen side. So let's say play black plays h5 to stop our plan. What would then happen, Hong Pao, probably? Exactly. Now we can play g4 because we're opening up a lot of space for, for our rooks. Let's just play out the variation to have a look here at what happens. It's time to get back that pawn, I guess. Which uh, rook would you use? Yeah, of course, so that that rook uh, keeps uh, restricting the black rook on, on a8. So, okay, I'll play rook king a5 just, just to have a look at what will happen here. Exactly. So now white will pick up the pawn on g4, and uh, the e5 pawn is as strong as ever, no? So, okay, I'll play something here. Um, yeah, what, what would I play? Actually, it's, it's not easy to, to see a move for, for black here. Uh, Rook h8 says, yeah, thanks, Mega Charles Rex. You saved me. <laughs> you found a move for black. Nice. So please go ahead, uh, uh, Hong Pao. Please go ahead. Rook takes g4. And yeah, let's play something here. Just Rook h, h2 to play active chess. Uh -huh. But now you can see for yourself that finally white will be able to work on their front in the center, so to speak. They are now in conditions to work on the op to the past pawn. So rook f6 is probably made if white gets it in. So I would have to play something like rook d2. Let's just have a look at this variation. Um, yeah, where would you put your king? Aha, uh -huh. okay, again, you're threatening to mate me, so I'll have to play rook d3 first. But as you can see, black will lose this game because um, 
yeah, the, the rooks are too strong. White rooks are too strong. I think if I take here again, I'm, I'm probably mated, right? There, there might be mate somewhere. But it's not even necessary because you can also just run with a pawn and you will win here effortlessly. But okay, if somebody can see a mate, please let me know. Uh, there might be one. Maybe you have a fancy move like this, right? And you can play rook d4. Or maybe we shouldn't be that clever, no? Maybe they can play bishop c8, right? Yeah, so what do you say, Hong Kong? What would you play? Yeah, let's not uh, overcomplicate this. Exactly. We play e6 and we will win the game. We won't even let them sack the bishop on the pawn. We'll eliminate the bishop instead. So I, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, white will win this game or, or should we continue? Rook e3, maybe. We, we can continue, of course. Or, or anyone. Did, did we miss something here on, on the way? Was there any other better move, perhaps? Wouldn't king f2 be better than king e2? Yeah, probably I stepped on the right, on the wrong square. Yeah, let's go to f2 instead. All right. Good point. So now we just continue. Uh, now it's not a check anymore. So yeah, then you drop the rook. Exactly. Yeah, you're right, Eric. That's a very good observation. So yeah, definitely white will win this game. Basically, this is what we want here. Um, this is the initial position. I don't know how, how easy you think this maneuver is to, to spot this maneuver over the board, uh, but I think it's really impressive because uh, the rooks are famous for, for sometimes being very active and sometimes being very passive. It's a piece that you really need to give it a lot of space in the end game. So that's why I think this is the best move with white. You, you put the rook on a3, you control a little here, and you prepare to open the second front with h3 and g4. Of course, you could say that, okay, black does not need to play, uh, let's say, here. You could say that black could just uh, ignore this. But I mean, if, if you ignore it also, white will, of course, just use their, their open file. They'll play something like rook uh, g1 and they'll take, and yeah, something will happen here. You can bet that something will happen. So that's basically it in this uh, little exercise. We have to play on both flanks. We cannot break through by a4, a5. That would be fantastic, but it's not possible. We need to play on both flanks. Would it be better to waste the tempo with black with rook a6 and then rook a3? Yeah, some people are also saying this. I forgot to say this. If you, again, if somebody was attracted by this variation, we just looked at this, right? They, we looked at this and we concluded that it was not working. So Medina Tiger is saying that it would be better to waste the tempo for black with rook a6 and then rook a3. I mean, it all depends on the position of the bishop, right? So you mean that it's better to have this with, with white or with black? Um, with white? Yeah, maybe. Maybe this is even better for some, some technical reason. Um, but I think in both cases, it, it's very, very promising for, for white. In both cases, it's, it's very promising for white. Um, I guess you can also, if you, if you hate uh, sacrificing pawns, I guess you can also play rook g1. It's probably not a bad move when you can go g4, but okay. Uh, yeah, maybe this is even simpler now that I think about it. There is no real good argument against it. I mean, okay, black can play a5, but it seems to me that white is much, much faster here. But uh, yeah, any of those ways, any of those ways, either g4 straight away or rook g1 first. All right, maybe we should bring up our last uh, example for today. Let's have a look at a position again with a little more pieces on the board. Let's see here. We have, this is a very nice game in the Catalan. It was played a few years ago. Um, popping with white or pairing with the black pieces. So typical Catalan battle, you can see that uh, black didn't uh, get the best side of uh, this uh, Catalan, they ended up with a very passive bishop on a8. Those of you who know the famous game Carpov Lotier 1992, you might uh, remember this picture now of the bishop tying the black bishop along the long diagonal. But who knows? Maybe not forever, no? <laughs> All right. It's your move. Send me what you think is White's uh, best uh, move here. Should we make this a little variation or, or should we just. Uh... All right. Let's uh, let's make a few moves here. Right, uh, two minutes. Try to see the best way to continue with white. Remember that we already have one front on the queen side. Remember the kingdom of Ryland thing. Huh. I don't understand your comment, uh, Robo. But okay, never mind. Take your time, uh, uh, guys. Uh, Bishop h5 check. Interesting. Maybe you can play like that also. Yeah, I, I didn't uh, think of that move. I guess I'll play king 
G8 then. I can see your point, Royal. You want to play Queen H6, right? But uh, oh, okay, I could maybe play King G8. Um, all right. Look at the whole board, please, uh, guys. Look at the whole board. Remember that today we're speaking about opening a new front. I like the move, uh, HDI chess, that you are proposing. I think it's a very good move also, aha, uh -huh. in spirit of this of this position. So what else? Aha, uh -huh, you take that pawn, uh, AD chess. Uh, okay, so Eric and Robo, you got it, basically. The, that's the right way to go. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, great work by Eric, Robo, Google chess, and Pikachu. That's the way to go. Uh, you can probably improve that variation. Um, if you give that check, uh, Mega Charles Rex got the whole variation. Let's see here. If you play like that, I guess it works also. King G8, is that possible? Or are you mating me somehow? Uh, maybe you are. Okay, we'll look into it. So far, only one winner, Mega Charles uh, Rex. Uh huh. A lot of different. Uh, Opinions here. Let's see. Me Medina Tiger, you're very close also. You're playing in a technical way. Subham, you're also very close. Heavy the Hero, uh, Hong Pao, and so on. A lot of people got the right idea. Kwoki also got the right idea. But only Mega Charles Rex uh, found the moves played in the game. So please go ahead, Mega Charles Re Rex, and share with us your solution. So G4, we don't care about this pawn right now. We first try to uh, weaken the Black King on F7. I think this is a little bit similar to our first example today, right? Black has many pieces on the Queen side, so it makes sense to do something on the King side. Opening up a new front, we don't know exactly what will happen here, we just know that it must be good for us to, to open the gates towards the Black King. So in the game, I think they took the pawn, right? They took it? Or didn't they take the pawn? No, they didn't take the pawn. No, sorry, they played in the game C5. Yeah, they, they were desperate to to liberate the, the bishop. Aha! So pawn takes, pawn takes, and here there are some flashy tactics coming up. Right, e6, so that uh, we cannot take due to rook d7. I think in the game they played king... Where did they go with the king in the game? King f8, maybe? Maybe. Aha! Did I ask you for... No, king g8, sex mega Charles Rex. Okay. And uh, I asked you for one more move. Exactly. All right, we will come back to this position. So that's the right way to go, basically. Uh, open up the game. We notice that black can, of course, not play g6 because then their queen side is the king side is horribly weakened. We can start with queen h6 or we can take first if you like. Uh, definitely, they cannot take it this way. There are too many white pieces coming there, uh, I guess. Or what do you think? Maybe you would play queen h6 straight away. Yeah, maybe this is even more more technical. So, yeah, this looks dangerous for for black. Uh, but now let's have a look at the other moves that you're saying. Bishop takes e6, it's definitely possible, but okay, I could then first play rook c8. You would have to protect your bishop with rook c3, I guess. Now you're threatening to play bishop e8, and I would take on... What would I play here? Queen, queen a5? Is that possible? Maybe like this? If I'm blundering something, please let me know. But that's probably what I will play here. And I, I will be hoping that I'm able to, to get back a pawn. And if I don't get back a pawn still, I'll be happy that maybe with my major pieces on the board, there is still a fair chance for a draw. So probably we should not take that pawn. Some people were saying they move rook c3, which is also very logical. Um, I don't know if I can play the same move, queen a5, targeting the pawn on e5. No, I'm not completely convinced that this is... Uh, after all, I'm just waiting for you to take this pawn. <laughs> My bishop is useless anyway. If you check that game that I'm telling you about, Karpov Lotier, uh, you will see what I'm speaking about. Karpov won that game in very pretty fashion, uh, on the king side, actually, also. He, he never took the pawn. He, he just preferred to have black sitting with his horrible bishop. All right? So, uh, g4 is what I think is the best move. Uh, some people were saying also bishop h5 check, so I was saying maybe I could play king g8, and I didn't see 
what was the real danger here in, in this uh, in this position. Uh, I could maybe go G6 next move also if necessary. Um, I guess your point was that you wanted to play Queen H6 or something like that. But even then, I don't see this clearly. Um, but okay, I understand you wanted to sacrifice on on G6. So that's why I would play King G8 first. So I will wait a little for you to see your moves also. So if you play something like Queen D2, then I'll play G6. And somehow I, I think I, I tricked you here. I think I'm still alive in this position. Or maybe I'm wrong. Or is is black lost here? No, I don't think so. I can play rook e8, right? And also, I'm attacking this pawn. Or maybe there is something even better. Anyway, I think we got the picture here. We got the picture. Uh, we should try to open up a new front. So in the game, they played here the move g4. Uh, Aha. So if they take on g4, it's uh, horrible for uh, for black right and we'll take and we'll bring up all our pieces to to attack now on, on the on the king side so in the game after the g4 they played c5 and we all already had this explained by mega charles rex right g4 c5 pawn takes uh, black had to take back because if they take on f3 i mean you could even just take on e6 i guess aha uh -huh. so this is not uh, nice for black Pawn takes e6, they played king g8, and white... Uh... Okay, should I quiz you on this one, maybe? Yeah, maybe we should quiz here. Um, what do you think? So, e6, king g8. Um, okay, I think you already said the next move, right? Uh, Mega Souls Rex, you already said it. Rook d7, yeah, we already saw this. So, rook takes, rook takes, that's how the game went. Now black played queen e5. So, all right, guys. Let's see if you can um, finish off uh, black. Why not queen takes e5? When you want to play queen takes e5? I don't follow. Let's go forward. Okay. e6. Here, queen takes e5. Queen takes e5. But I can... I don't follow, really. I mean, I can play rook e8 here, right? Oh, yeah. But okay, your intention was excellent, but it's it's a little premature, this uh, tactical shot. So e6 was played in the game, king g8, uh, rook d7. Uh, am I playing the right way? Yeah, rook d7. That I would like all of you to find. So there are actually several solutions, but... I'll just pick the one played in the game, okay? All right. So here we go. One minute uh, 30. Um, yeah, white to play and win, basically. All right, nice move, uh, Eric. Uh, I don't know what I will play against that. Looks uh, crushing to me, your, your move. Yeah, maybe that is winning also, your move. Maybe there are many ways to win. I just like the way in which uh, they played in the game. But okay, uh, let's see. So Mega Charles Rex and the Robo and Adiches, um, I think that wins also, yeah, what you play. Yeah, fair enough. That's uh, that's enough to win the game, definitely. Um, I just can't figure out what to do against uh, Eric's move. So, I cannot move the rook, then you take. I cannot take because you mate me. And what else can I do? Queen, queen f6, uh, Eric. Might that be the reply? Maybe. Okay, rook d8 check. Yeah, I guess awesome oven, Aditya and Dragon Ninja. I'll play that endgame with uh, rook and uh, bishop versus queen. If you play like that. Heavy the hero. Uh, that's a good solution also, uh, definitely. Aha. Uh -huh. So many ways to win. Yeah, don't uh, get angry at me because you. it says you failed. But most of you guys, you probably succeeded here. So we can uh, we can listen to Heavy the Hero. Heavy the Hero, you got really far. So please go ahead, Heavy the Hero. What would you play? 
Okay, so uh, you play e7 first to threaten rook d8 check. All right. Uh, I must take it. Black is on f3. Uh huh. And then uh, you have to play queen c4 check because if, if you play rook, rook d8, d8 check, there's just king f7, I think. Exactly. Some people were saying this, and uh, I'm, I'm saying that I, I'm I'm ready to play this end game. Uh, I mean, white is better, but I can probably uh, hold on for a while. So, okay, please go ahead. Uh, sorry, have it here. So, yeah. Oh, sorry, it's one move before. Yeah, yeah. please go ahead. So, Quincy four check. Uh, can't uh -huh. move his king back, or else that's mate. And right. So, so I must play bishop d five. And then you have different ways of winning, you know. Uh, uh, but your way is very convincing. Uh -huh. Rook d eight check. King of seven. And probably e eight. Queen is probably simpler, actually. Yeah, I think that's what they played in the game. Aha. Uh -huh. So exactly. So here, Black resigned because they they simply noticed that they end up, uh, yeah, with a rook down. Exactly. So you win the game here. Aha. Uh -huh. But okay, we can of course have a quick look at the other moves here. So if you play rook takes d five here, I think I was no, I cannot swap queens. Oh, I see, I see. So probably this is also fine because I, I cannot swap queens, right? Then you win anyway with rook d eight. So I guess everything wins, in fact, right? Or, or could I play queen e No, I cannot. I cannot play anything, can I? No, nothing, because rook d8 is coming no matter what I play. Or are we missing something? No, I don't think so. So this is also winning. And uh, yeah, so rook takes d5 is fine. And yeah, there are other moves also. Eric was saying the move... Uh, queen d1, right? Queen d1. So I guess if you play like that, Eric, I'll play queen f6. Uh, do you still win? Probably you are by pushing the pawn, but okay, maybe some check you have to worry about. So I think it's more clear cut what they played in the game. Aha, uh -huh, like uh, Heavy the Hero was explaining to us. So that you can play here e7 and you have this nice intermediate move, queen c4 check. And uh, yeah, that's. That's basically it, right? If you play instead queen takes, this is less clear because then I can play queen takes d5, right? You queen and I play king f8. Is this winning? I'm not completely sure because I also have some perpetual coming up here. So maybe you don't want to play like this, right? It would make things more complex than necessary, um, if I'm not mistaken. So I pretty much prefer the variation that we were looking at. Just e8 queen anyway this is more about tactics now and uh, my point was mainly to show you that here it's not the only plan to to attack this pawn and uh, with rook c3 or, or even take it but you should also consider to open up a new front so this kind of thinking with two weaknesses or opening up a new front you can even use it in kind of middle game positions like like this one playing here the move g4 because the black king is just very exposed on f7 all right, guys, I think that's it for today. Uh, next time we will have a look at the second block of, uh, of endgames of this kind. Uh, there will be a second part. Thanks a lot for today and uh, see you next time.